On Asia Down Under, Keeping Language Alive, a preschool program that's supporting Mandarin. And Sri Lanka, the end of a three-decade-long conflict. We head to the former war-torn East to learn a little of life today. Kia ora and welcome to Asia Down Under. The history of New Zealand Chinese and market gardening are inextricably linked. And a new book to be published next year charts the story behind New Zealand Chinese market gardeners. Milda visited one of the country's oldest established farms to find out more. For more than five decades, Hao Yang has been market gardening on the rich farmland of Pukekoe. This current CEO of the Dominion Federation of New Zealand Chinese Commercial Growers has been following his father's footsteps. Parents uh, set up the business and um, when my brothers and that two older brothers took over and we started growing the company and um, like at that stage we had the whole family virtually working at home. In the 1940s, nearly 90% of green vegetables around the country were grown by Chinese. During the war years, the job was seen as very important. The government encouraged the creation of the Dominion Federation of Chinese Commercial Growers in order to supply fresh produce to armed forces in the Pacific. Hao Yang's father was one of the founding members. My father, he was an Okuni at the time. He went around to all the districts to get all the growers to join up. I would say there would have been 1,000 to 1,500 Chinese growers at that time. This was followed by the founding of Chinese Growers' Journal in 1949. It started out handwritten. A printed version came three years later. A lot of the Chinese growers were in rural areas. It was not only just growers' information on the newspaper, it was general topics as well. What was going on in China and all that. With such long history, how is highly pleased the story is being recorded in two books. The Sons of the Soil tells the story of individual growers from gold rush days to present. The other, Success Through Adversity, is about the formation of the Federation and its challenges. At one stage, 75% of the Chinese in New Zealand were actually market gardening. So, um, you know, for second and third generation Chinese here, they must have had some relations or that they were actually um, doing market gardening. And um, we will, through in this project, list all the growers, the years that they were operating, and I mean, they can look it up and maybe see, see their uh, grandfather, great-grandfather names there. The books have been five years in the making. Written by Nigel Murphy, Ruth Lam and Lily Lee, they are on track to be launched early next year. It's got lots of stories of the growers. We actually were able to capture uh, at least some of the stories from each district. We couldn't do every one, unfortunately, so some people will have missed out in a sense in terms of being in the book. But we do have a list of every gardener that we can think of from 1930s to today. I really enjoy the, the thrill of the chase, finding out all these little bits of information and meeting all the people involved and learning about lots of new family connections as well. It's been really great. It wasn't easy because m most of the material is actually in Chinese, which I, you know, I can only read a little bit of it. And I've been studying Chinese and Zealand history for about 30 years. Nigel is a historian and a former curator for the Alexander Turnbull Library. Lily is a former education officer for the Ministry of Education. And Ruth was a former manager for Franklin District Library. First of all, being Chinese and talking about Chinese market gardeners is a real plus. And then having a mother who actually went and worked in the garden in 1949, I feel as if it's a part of my history. It was quite hard work. And we had horses instead of a tractor. I had to go on messages to ring up the carrier to pick up our vegetables or ring up a person to come and do our rotary hoeing. And I was age nine. And I was also doing the wages and we used to do um, the textbook, you know, to, to pay our workers. And I had to do all that work 
because mum couldn't speak any English and couldn't write English. So my husband is Market Gardening still, uh, and, and it's, it was his family that have been the, the Market Gardeners. Um, my family were um, people, fruit shop owners, so I haven't had um, the gardening background as such when I was growing up, but certainly with the fruit and veggies still, the connection is with my husband's family. In the old days there were three key occupations. For the Chinese there was Market Gardening, fruit shops and laundries, but for some reason Market gardening has always been overlooked, but you know it's a vital part of of the Chinese New Zealand, New Zealand history. Our members have diminished. We're getting less and less. Um, we're probably going to become more of a cultural organisation. We would be the um, oldest Chinese growers organisation outside of China. It's just really been um, a lot of hard work. Uh, for sometimes for not much return and they didn't want to have their children growing up in that environment so they've encouraged them to get educated go to university have professional careers and so with without the young ones coming onto the garden uh, the, the older ones are just carrying on until retirement and then finishing off so that's why we have such a big sort of decrease in, in numbers it's been a huge family tradition but it's coming to an end Market gardening will soon be just history that will only be handed down through these books. To find out more, check out the website of the New Zealand Chinese Association.